Welcome back to Athletic Every Day, day number 159. Seems like I'm doing a lot more workouts in the work gym recently. Uh, I think it's mostly just because it's convenient. If I finish a shift at work at 5 or 5.30, um, it does make sense for me to just do the workout in the gym here rather than coming all the way home. Because when I come home, um, I always say to myself, like, like, right, as soon as I get in the door, I'm just going to go and smash out the workout and then, you know, go out at the back and just do it straight away. But it never, it never happens. There's always like, oh, but I could have a meal, you know, get my energy up a little bit. Or I just need to you know, take a little rest, sit down for a bit. And then I end up doing the workout just like last thing in the evening. And I just don't like that. I don't like having to push the workout right till the end of the day, um, leaving it at the extremes. And then obviously that's going to impact on your sleep. <clears throat> Uh, even though I did do this workout <laughs> after work, I didn't sleep very well last night. But hey, you know, sometimes that's just how life happens. And um, what, what's got me thinking a lot recently um, with just general personal development is how much you have to constantly put yourself in the fire of growing yourself. So you have to constantly put your feet, hold your feet to the fire, I guess it is. Put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Um, it's exhausting because really what's happening when you're doing these things when you're when you're doing when you're doing very difficult uncomfortable things for example the workouts doing a cold shower doing uh, you know extra hours at work for instance trying to sort of push yourself beyond what you currently are what i time what what you'll hopefully find is that um through that difficulty there is an aspect of yourself that is hating it and there's also an aspect of yourself that knows that it's necessary to to grow the point i'm trying to get at here is that in order to grow sometimes you actually have to kill a little part of yourself a part of yourself that isn't congruent with the future that you have coming up for you uh, my favorite analogy i think it was like um, in a film that tom hardy was in or something a while back uh, i remember listening to it. i don't even know if i saw the film but i just remember the sound bite it was like sometimes in order to grow you have to cut off a part of yourself in order to help a tree grow sometimes you have to sever off um, a limb of the tree you have to cut off a part of it and it's the same thing as a human obviously the metaphor doesn't literally translate I'm not going to cut off a leg so that I can grow more but um, sometimes you have to let go of parts of yourself that just aren't part of your future they, they, they don't match up with part of your future um, and that's just what it means to mature as a human being I've always struggled with procrastination, laziness, sort of like just mindless. I guess you could say it's, it, it really is YouTube at the moment. It's just mindless content consumption. We all have our phones in our pockets all the time. And, you know, my favorite analogy for a phone is your digital pacifier. So when you have something that's not going your way, you get some kind of like emotion that you don't want to deal with. Um, you'll generally just go on your phone to sort of distract yourself from it. You'll go and look at Instagram, you'll look at YouTube, you'll scroll through social media and you'll find an interesting piece of content that will probably distract you from something that you're not really wanting to deal with. And I've, you know, I, I still do it. And I think that this is a part of myself that because I've built up the habit of doing this over such an extended period of time, you know, how long have I had a phone for? I've had a phone since I was what, 11 years old and I'm now 24, that's 13 years, that's more than half of my life I've had access to a phone and had access to the internet. And it's a very difficult habit, it's very difficult to uproot, but um, it's a part of yourself, isn't it? It's, it's a part of yourself that you do have to kill, you have to cut it off in order to help and, per, and to promote your growth in the future. That's not to say, you know, I'm never ever gonna watch YouTube ever again, but there's definitely more high consciousness ways to consume content versus low consciousness ways. I'd say a low consciousness way to consume content is mindlessly not being aware of it, just opening your phone and not planning on doing it. You know, I've had times in the past when I've just opened up YouTube and actually had a specific thing I was looking for going into the search bar and finding it or going into like my old playlists and looking at my like, um, my saved videos that I wanted to watch later uh, and looking for a topic that's actually going to pique my interest rather than just opening up YouTube and then just seeing whatever the, ser the algorithm is serving up to you with the first video and the recommended. I think the recommendations can, they can be fantastic. You can get a really interesting video, but they can also be incredibly toxic. Um, and you don't have control over that. You have no control over what YouTube serves up to you in the algorithm. Yes, you get some, some, some content from, your, from who you subscribe to, but then also you just get random stuff shown there that you have no control over seeing and that could put you in any kind of emotional state for the rest of the day. Say first thing you do, you open up YouTube, there's a very emotionally triggering video for you, whatever that is for you. You open up and then you watch that for five minutes and then the rest of the day that's gonna color your experience for the rest of the day because you're gonna be emotionally triggered, you're gonna be more sensitive, you're gonna be thinking about 
certain things when if you hadn't opened that or you maybe looked at a different video or you, the algorithm has served you up a completely different video, maybe you would have made a different mood for the rest of the day. So it's, it's, it's knowing that, um, that because I have no control of what the algorithm serves me, I need to stop mindlessly consuming this, this YouTube because it's a part of me that has been built up over a long enough period of time and it's a part of me that is now, I would consider like my lower self. It's not who I want to be in the future and not the person that has, um, who's just willing to let the algorithm decide how I'm gonna feel for the day. I want myself to decide how I feel for the day. I want myself to be able to decide um, the emotions and the thoughts I'm gonna be having throughout the day because you, you can't control every single thought and you can't have you know control over every single emotion, but you can definitely have a more conscious attitude towards them rather than an unconscious and unproductive attitude towards them. I think people often, myself included obviously, people often struggle with like how they don't have control over their emotions or you'll have emotions that just pop up out of nowhere and then you don't know how to respond to them. You don't know what the emotion is trying to tell you. You don't know why you're feeling it. Um, you know, and, and oftentimes when you have an emotion, you'll just try and ignore it or you'll try and just pretend that it's not there, especially if it's a very negative emotion. You know, it's all very well you're having happy emotions and being called that. If you have very negative emotions, like you get sadness out of nowhere for, for no reason, or you might think it's for no reason, um, you have to know how to respond to it and what that actually means for you. And actually being able to feel negative emotions is very difficult and people struggle with that. And that's the reason why people will have um, all kinds of coping mechanisms and unhealthy coping mechanisms. I mean, I think work, I'd be lying if I said that workouts weren't a coping mechanism for me to deal with uh, negative emotions. A number of times I've been incredibly depressed or incredibly anxious or angry or sad and then I've just gone and done a workout even when I didn't fucking feel like it and then after the workout I just felt much much better because I felt like I'd accomplished something I'd done something with my day and that's another reason why I love these workouts so much and I love doing this every day because it's, it's constantly holding my feet to the fire forcing myself regardless of what emotional state I'm in to go and do the workout and just get it done and finish all of the all of the workouts and even if I don't perform up to the standard that I wanted to perform to at least I've then achieved and done my best I remember there was this quote from Tom Platts the bodybuilder the quad father he's got fucking huge legs go look him up if you don't know who Tom Platts is um, Tom Platts said um, he was talking about a situation where he recently I think he broke up with his, his, his girlfriend or wife or something she was cheating on him anyway the point is is that he said uh, and from that moment on, I always gave my best because then I couldn't fail. And that's very, very true. It's completely true. You literally cannot fail if you always give your best. If you try your best every single day, um, you know, for me, it's these workouts, whatever you do, if you try your best um, and it really is your best, you've tried your best, then it doesn't matter what the outcome of your attempt is, whether, you've, whether you, <coughs> I guess you could say, fail in that workout or you don't perform up to your usual standard. As long as you've tried your best, then you cannot fail. And that is a very important mindset to have because you know you can't always control the outcome of a situation. You can't always get the outcome that you're looking for um, in any area of life. Um, but as long as you've done your best and you know you've you've tried reasonably what would be your best for that day, then um, you know technically you haven't failed because you've done the best you can. You've done you've controlled the things that you can control, and then the things that are outside of your control, you know you let the cards fall how they may, as the um, as the analogy goes. So yeah, a little bit of a different video today. Me rambling again about psychology, personal development, a little bit of philosophy is what it is. Um, I, feel like, I feel like I butchered a lot of these concepts, but you know, again, try my best to do and explain the concept I was trying to get across. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.